inside. It's Walt in New York City because Matt Bellamy from Muse is, sta- is sitting right here next to me. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Good, man. How are you? I'm good. So, I uh, had the thrill of my life this morning. I had a chance to listen to the whole album, Drones, which is out on uh, June 9th here in the States. <laughs> Wow. Um, you know, you had said that, you know, or I had heard that this is going to be a rock record. And you actually delivered on that. <laughs> was that a, the intent going into it? Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, the the we band started out, guitar, bass and drums, we all stripped down, you know, pretty basic. And uh, But as we made albums, as we developed, we kind of brought other elements in like pianos, kind of, you know, orchestral music, electronic music, program drums. And by the time we got to the sort of fourth, fifth album, or fifth and sixth album, we were actually producing the albums ourselves, you know. We almost kind of like let go of our instruments and just became producers, you know. So we kind of felt like that had gone far enough on the last album. So on this album, we had to kind of sort of forget all that, get back in the live room, get a producer in, obviously Mutt Lang, to kind of take care of things. And so we could just focus on playing our instruments again and being like jamming as a band again, you know. So that we knew that would obviously create a sort of more of a rock album. You know? Right. Was that refreshing? Was it a, a really good feeling to go like, you know what, I just got to play my guitar like mm-hmm. I did when I was a kid? Yeah, no, it's great. You know, it's great to be back in a rehearsal room together like that, you know, just uh, making all decisions based on how you're playing rather than like clicking on clicking on computer screens, you know, and things like that. So it was nice to, uh, and also working with Matt Lang was great because he, he's come from that generation where he's used to working with people, you know, and, uh, you know, so, you know, right before there was technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when you work with people, you have to work with their, <laughs> with their flaws or the fact that you know, they make mistakes and you have to keep correcting things, doing multiple takes and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot, the process is a lot harder, but it's worth it because I think you end up with something that sounds a bit more, you know, human. Organic. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Which kind of is in line with the theme of the album. Tell, tell me a little bit about drones. Yeah, it's, um, I just got interested in drones technology, you know, a few years ago, started reading about it, you know, reading about what the CIA were doing in um, Afghanistan and East Pakistan, the deals they're doing with uh, the Pakistan government. And uh, it was kind of amazing, really. There's a book called Predators, CIA Drone Warfare Against Al-Qaeda that just got really sort of caught my attention. And uh, it got me thinking about just modern technology, really. And, that, and then um, at the same time that we were recording the album, I was... Um, going to this place called D-Wave, uh, which is uh, uh, basically a quantum computer company that, uh, that are creating sort of art- uh, first steps towards real artificial intelligence, you know? So, and then I was reading about things to do with autonomous drones, you know, the fact that they're trying to sort of talk about the ethical, you know, right. uh, consequences of creating drones which make their own kill decisions. And I just thought the whole thing sort of seemed like an interesting topic and a, re- and a real, again, like a real sort of sign of our times that we live in, that how far technology's come and how far it's kind of, and how much it creates distance, I think, you know, between, um, you know, people, I Essentially, and I think that that's kind of, I guess, the theme of the album. And uh, drones just seem like a really sort of good metaphor to use throughout the album. You know, so I, I use that word all, all the way through, but I use it to mean different things. You know, I use it singing about people, brainwashed people, or people that have no emotion, people that have no feelings, people that behave like machines. And I guess uh, throughout the whole album, there is this kind of battle of the sort of human soul trying to fight against the oppressive forces of the machinery. You know? Absolutely. And uh, as I was talking to Dom in the handler, I think you can actually hear that struggle. You can yeah, hear yeah. you can hear it turn where that's the pivot point. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you, you mentioned you talk about drones throughout the last piece is a vocal piece. <laughs> yeah. um, how did that come about? It's very orchestrated. Wait till you hear this album. It's going to blow you away. Yeah. Um, well, the last piece is actually based on a, a religious piece of music by Palestrina, an Italian composer and um, from the sort of 16th century, I think, or something, something around that time. And it's a very, very religious piece of music, you know, um, but obviously I changed the lyrics to be all about modern technology yeah. and, and the dangers of, you know, being killed by drones and things like that. And I just thought that was a really sort of quite a sort of disturbing juxtaposition, you know. <laughs> and it ends with an amen. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like a, end on a sort of mysterious religious note that amen sing sung by, you know. No, uh, the the story when you because uh, I've heard Dead Inside, I've heard Psycho going into this, but now that I've heard the entire album in sequence, it, it all makes even more sense than the songs do taken out uh, yeah. of context. I mean, they're fine on their own, but when you hear the whole story. Um, was it hard to piece the story together or did you go I want to tell the story of this guy and then he's going to go through these stages yeah I mean originally I mean Matt Lang was quite influential in that area because he, he picked up on some of the concepts and the themes that I was talking about and obviously drones and everything and he, he was actually sort of saying we should you know try and make this a bit have a bit more of a narrative structure to it you know and it, it originally actually I had the album uh, sort of the other way around really where it kind of it, it kind of started off quite uplifting and positive songs like Revolt and effect and stuff and then kind of went on this very dark journey of sort of like a person losing themselves and eventually becoming a robot towards the end wow know? but in fact we thought that was too jaded you know <laughs> so, so we actually ended up, ended yeah. up working working the narrative the other way around where essentially you start off 
uh, dead inside at the beginning, the sort of person going on this journey of uh, losing themselves and being kind of dead inside, I guess, and staying in that, in that sort of lost state for like three or four songs and eventually sort of discovering themselves. And around about the JFK speech is kind of where they sort of transition. Well, as you said, in, in The Handlers, where it starts and then right. JFK's right. real transition into Defector, where the person kind of discovers their own inner strength and their ability to uh, stand up for themselves, I guess. And, yeah, I, uh, I noticed in Revolt, I could actually hear like this the sound of hope for lack of a better term you can definitely hear it in the music i mean the the whole story evolves and then then you hit the globalist and uh <laughs> you know it's it's just an epic piece <laughs> yeah um yeah i mean there's like there's to me there's actually two narratives on the album really there's like the sort of uh, the story that starts from dead inside and ends with aftermath you know it's like sort of person loses love loses hope in himself and then sort of goes on this dark journey into brainwashing discovers inner strength and then rediscovers love again on aftermath and that's kind of like a one story, you know. Then Globalist is kind of the same story, but with a bad ending, you know. So right. <laughs> um, and so that, that's kind of a person that sort of yeah, loses hope, but just stays there, you know. Doesn't really, doesn't ever sort of find the strength to come back. So it's kind of uh, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, it's it's got lots of layers to the album, you know. Because there's two, there's two sort of parallel things happening really. You've got the story of an individual going through a sort of internal battle, and sort of, and uh, as I said, eventually discovering it in his strength. But at the same time, you've got this kind of battle between sort of humanity and technology, you know, sort of on a more Sort of social comment type level, you know. I'm sort of all the way through the album trying to get those two stories to kind of exist at the same time. Mm -hmm. 